Blender 4.2 is here and it brings a party bus full of new features, upgrades, refinements and a whole new kind of socket to the noodly world of geometry nodes. There's a delicious assortment of exciting new nodes and so many changes to existing nodes that you're going to have a hard time remembering what life was like before you watch this. Why don't we start with the Realize Instances node? which now gives you much more control over what you're realizing. Here, I'm using a collection of 16 cones and cubes as one instance. With Realize All set to True, they are all realized as real geometry. Switching it to False and with a depth of zero, the one instance remains unrealized. With a depth of one, however, the collection is realized, but the 16 cone and cube instances are not and a depth of 2 realizes the collection instance and the 16 instances, giving us the same result as Realize All. Next up, the rotation socket continues its campaign of world domination. The Curve to Points node now has one, and the Align Euler to Vector node, many a geometry node as first boss battle, has been depreciated, replaced with the Align Rotation to Vector node. There's a Rotation Input node, and a new Axis to Rotation node. This allows you to take two vectors, in this example, the tangent and the normal of a curve, and convert them into a rotation. Next, the Sample Nearest Surface node and the Geometry Proximity node now have Group ID and Sample Group ID inputs, giving us much greater control over how we sample. I'm sampling the geometry's proximity to this empty, then scaling their faces by the distance from it. The group ID separates the mesh into groups defined by what's plugged into it. I'm using the Mesh Island Index. Sample group ID defines which of our groups we are sampling in, so we can sample the distance from Mesh Island 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or 8. Or, if we use the Island Index as the sample group ID, the distance calculated for each face is the distance of its island from the empty. Next, there have been advancements in named attributes. Store named attribute can now store 8-bit integers. And for anyone who may have ever made the mistake of naming a named attribute after their X, remove named attribute now has a wildcard function, allowing you to remove attributes with the same painful prefix or suffix. Onward, and the Mesh Boolean node now has a float option, like its Boolean modifier and edit mode counterparts. The Face Neighbors node has been tweaked for accuracy, and for those of us who found the crooked sockets on the repeat and simulation zones a source of great unease, harmony has been attained. They've even added a little tab to tell us when we're baked. The menu switch now has dynamic sockets, so we can plug away at full tilt when needs must. And Capture Attribute has also acquired shiny new dynamic sockets too, because it needs them, what with it now being able to capture multiple attributes at once. And now we come to a full suite of new nodes, the matrix nodes. We all understand transformation data being stored as three separate attributes, translation, rotation and scale. Well now we can store all three of them on one attribute, the transform attribute. Look, matrices can be very difficult. I mean, sometimes people can make four of them and only one of them is any good. But the reward of a slightly steeper learning curve is a powerful new way of handling transforms, because matrices is how Blender handles them under the hood. So you can think of these nodes as Duolingo nodes, allowing us to speak transform, Blender's mother tongue, and we'll all be guided in this new language learning frenzy by the inevitable incoming armada of YouTube videos from so many ready to teach us math. We'll all get through it together, you know, and the comment sections will be lit. Our last three nodes are three node tool nodes, mouse position, view transform, and active element. Combined with the new Wait for Click option, these can be used to create more advanced and interactive tools. 
And before I go, I want to celebrate those extraordinary athlete nodes that have trained so hard to improve their performance. First, the grid, the captain of a group of nodes that has benefited greatly from thread optimization. Scale elements, which is now four to 10 times faster, and sample UV surface, which is 10 to 20 times faster on large meshes. And that is us, the new geometry nodes of Blender 4.2. Now there's a strong possibility that you might see all of this again. It's part of the official Blender 4.2 new features video over on the Blender channel. Thanks to John Lampell for asking me to join in the fun. And it was just that, fun. So go check that out for all the new Blender goodness. And yes, check out my Patreon too, which is also new, like really new. If you lie awake at night and wonder how you can support that guy who makes those strange noodly geometry node videos, then this is the Patreon for you. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped.